guys, how's it going? It's Al. Week four, Monday Night Football. We've got a fantastic game between the Seattle Seahawks and the New York Giants. Great captains on both sides. A lot of flex plays that we can talk about. A couple of undercover plays that I think are going to be there. And under 25% that we're going to talk about at the end of this video. We'll build a pick em card over on Underdog Fantasy. As well as taking a look at how to build 150 lineups using the Fantasy Labs lineup builder. So thank you guys for being here. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel and ring the notifications bell. Let's go! He's a legend. Be sure that you join our discord server go over to smizzle.tv slash discord make sure that you jump in there because every single friday i come out with my cheat sheet that's available for twitch subscribers and youtube channel members you can become a channel member by going to smizzle.tv slash join if you don't see the join button right down below it's five dollars a month you get access to our 10,000 person discord where members are there to talk about any daily fantasy sport or subject that you want anytime during the day as well as like I said every Friday afternoon that cheat sheet goes up there for VIP members as well so make sure you join the discord and if you wanted to check out the week four recap video where I'm going to go over everything that happened on the weekend how the cheat sheet did if you want to get a preview of kind of how it looks if you're not already a channel member how I how I built cash games did I win did I lose my 150 millionaire makers lineups everything rainmakers tournaments cash games high stakes everything is available over on the al smizzle fantasy football channel at smizzle.tv slash ff every single monday the recap video comes out there as well as other videos throughout the week let's take a look at the captains for this monday night football game first of all we got to talk about the the key injury right now saquon barkley doubtful for monday uh, Monday night. Now, look, if this changes and all of a sudden he's in, you can change things. But right now, I am operating as if Saquon Barkley is not going to play. If he is going to be cleared to play, I'm going to expect that he's going to be out there for a full complement of snaps. Otherwise, why play him? Rest him one more week, get him healthy, play him uh, in week five. But if they play him, he is certainly captain uh, playable, although you might want to be a little bit, uh, I'd, I'd be a little bit tentative. Assuming that he is out. Somebody like Daniel Jones does shape up and look like a fantastic play at captain, not only because he can, you know, do the job at quarterback, and typically I do limit my quarterbacks to about 5% each, 10% max, because the field tends to put way more usage and percentages on that quarterback at captain, and it doesn't usually end up being the optimal way. They win like between 10 to 15% of the time always, but like quarterbacks are typically held by let's say 20 to 30% of the field on a given night. I will expand that for unicorn type quarterbacks, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, um, you know, guys like that that can just take over game. Uh, Hertz as well fits into that mold. You know who they are. Usually if that quarterback's having a good night, one of their pass catchers having an amazing night. The difference is uh, Daniel Jones is one of those sneaky running quarterbacks. I don't mean sneaky because he's white. I mean sneaky because like, he can put up nine or 13 rushing attempts in a game, and he may have to do that in this sort of a scenario. Against San Francisco, they got throttled. Throw this game out. Against Dallas, they got throttled. Easier games ahead. These are two of the better defenses in the league, uh, and they are going to just curb stomp a lot of different players. But 13, nine rushing attempts gives them a really solid floor and that touchdown ceiling that you want as well. As them not having the best wide receiver room, uh, it does open up a little bit when you get away from teams like Dallas and San Francisco. We saw what his ceiling was against a team like Arizona. And maybe Daniel Jones is just the schoolyard bully, but if I'm going to play him at captain, what I mean by say he'll beat up the small teams, but like he's going to get killed by the bigger kids. So I'm going to make sure that I build a group that has two, at least two of his pass catchers in every group. Uh, every time that he is in the captain spot, him, we're going to have Gano because the kicker, uh, correlates a lot better with the with the quarterback at captain than people want to realize. Wandale at 3K, Paris Campbell at 2,800, Hyatt at 2K. All those guys would be in my Daniel Jones group that I'm going to build there with him at captain. And we're going to build another group with him at captain to make sure that at least, and I'm going to show you this in the labs builder later in the show, uh, about how to build a simple rule that's going to make sure it's a skill position player coming back at least one with every Daniel Jones at captain lineup. On the other side, 
Geno Smith has had one really solid game and two kind of average games. His job is to manage the game. I don't mean that in an insulting way. He's just not the type of quarterback who is a take-over-the-game guy, and they don't ask him to be a take-over-the-game guy. Not unlike a Brock Purdy, who is a solid quarterback who is asked to deliver the pizza. Geno Smith has plenty of guys on his team that he can deliver to, but if you feel he's going to end up as the optimal cap, which I personally think he's in play for it, but I don't think he's going to be the optimal because if he has a big day, 350 yards, like three, four touchdowns, I kind of feel like Metcalf or Tyler Lockett's going to have that monster day that's going to make them the optimal captain where I would use him with them in the lineup. But like, you know, we're going to build this group. I'm not going to use... Um, I'm not going to use Ken Walker in that lineup with him. We'll get to him in just a second. Although he has seen more usage in the passing game, I would only utilize a... I'm not going to exclude him from Geno Smith lineups where he's the captain, but I'm not going to make sure that he's in those lineups either. 15% of the target market share is uh, where I put those. Jackson Smith and Jigba just not playing enough snaps right now. Uh, they spent a lot of draft capital on this kid. He's got a lot of talent, but... They run a lot of two tight end. They run a lot of running back stuff where like they're going to run power and they want to have a lead blocker for them and they want to have tight ends out there in front of them. There's just no space for those three wide situations. But I'm going to include him in the group because he is a talented player who could go off kicker included in that as well. I'm going to include no offense if he is ready for this game. <clears throat> He's questionable. So is Will Disley, who we'll get to later. Uh, put all of the pass catchers in that group and then the skill positions coming back. Now, the players that I think are more viable, somebody like Ken Walker the third, I think is probably your, your best captain on the slate that's not a pass catcher. So guys like Metcalf and Lockett, I would have ahead of Ken Walker uh, because of the explosivity of the way that DraftKings scoring works because the full PPR and 100-yard bonus we know that we're not going to get the full complement of snaps and touches for Ken Walker, but 13 opportunities in week three, 19 opportunities uh, in week two against Detroit and against the Rams, a game where they got beaten pretty bad, still 17 opportunities in five of those coming in the past game. So Zach Charbonnet is on the field. The aren't you worried about bros who were worried about Cam? Aren't you worried that uh, Madison's going to lose snaps to Cam Akers? There are very, very few running backs in the league who can handle 95 plus percent of the snaps. And even if they can, they really can't do it for too long. Maybe a week, maybe two weeks. Even Kyron Williams had, uh, who has been seeing 90 plus percent has had to spell or get spelled by Rivers off the bench. It's a weird situation with CMC right now because all their other running backs are injured, but even he comes off the field for somebody like Mason when Eli is not ready to go behind him. So Charbonnet is going to take some snaps and some touches, but Ken Walker is going to get the lion's share of all of them, as you can kind of see with Charbonnet really being that change of pace guy. Uh, nine carries, four carries. This is a game that they're winning by a ton. Three carries, two targets. It's Ken Walker's show. He is the main guy that they want to feed. And Coach Carroll certainly takes care of his main guy at running back, except for like that one time when he probably should have given the ball to Marshawn Lynch. But other than that, other than that, Coach Carroll's done a fantastic job of taking care of his running back. Now, there's no real rule that I put into play with a running back at captain. They're just in there and you just build the best lineup you can around them as long as you've got a little bit of uh, correlation within that and making sure that you have a couple of parts where they're different. As I said, DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, it's a coin flip. It's impossible to know which one is going to go off on the nights that they might go off, um, but both get enough service and Metcalf, both are deep targets. Both can do it in one shot. Both can get there on volume. Uh, whether you're going to play DK Metcalf at captain or you're going to play Tyler Lockett at captain, he's had the one big game so far and then two other kind of med games. Maybe he's going to Brett Saberhagen his way through this year and just have big days on even weeks and then bad days on odd weeks. Uh, whatever sort of statistical anomaly you, anomaly you want to put together there. If they're your captain, I'm going to make sure that I have uh, their quarterback with him because if they have a big day, let's say DK has like an AJ Brown sort of day in week four, where he puts up like nine catches for 150, 170, and two touchdowns. That means that his quarterback is probably going to have to be there in a showdown lineup, considering how important every single point is in showdown uh, for those lineups. There's only one player that I think makes sense at captain for the Giants in the pass catching group. 
and it's Darren Waller. Now, if you're going to attack Seattle, it's going to be out of the slot. They do play Darren Waller out of the slot. He is a low A dot sort of threat. He is somebody who dominates in the first 10 to 11 yards uh, within the line of scrimmage. He's not a as much of a seam threat as he used to be. He can get loose down the seam, but it's not really where he he makes his bacon. He really operates closer to the line of scrimmage. And they have other guys on the team who have to win downfield. Uh, if you were to plug him in, in at your captain spot, I am going to make sure that Daniel Jones is in there. And like I said, you attack Seattle, uh, not from the outside guys, but from your slot receiver. And if they move him into motion somehow, that's where he's going to eat this week uh, if he is able to to get loose let's go over to underdog fantasy and take a look at the pickums that they have over there if you have not taken advantage you still have like three days they are giving away up to a 500 dollars deposit bonus on your first time deposit to the site just use code al smizzle a-l-s-m-i-z-z-l-e if you deposit 500 bucks they give you a 500 hundred dollar bonus boom right into your account very easily done i've picked a few overs look Picking the unders is sharper. I'm a donkey and I like to pick the hires because it's more fun because I don't want to sit there watching an island game and rooting for punts and field goals and fumbles. I want to watch good football. So I want to root for over one. I just want a touchdown from Ken Walker the third. I think that's coming. Daniel Jones, over 200, 270 or more passing plus rushing yards, combined yards for him. And give me Tyler Lockett catching and running for over 14.5 yards. We got this for $100 to win 600. Submit that. Get your bonus today and head over to Underdog and play all of their great pick em games and their best ball mania. They have a resurrection as well coming up, which starts in week six, I believe. So if you draft all the week five guys, you will have no bye weeks for the rest of the year. It's kind of a, a cheat code for your best ball resurrection teams, as well as the battle royale, which I think is very fun every single week. Let's get back to uh, looking at some of the value plays. I got four guys for you that I think are a little bit cheaper. We're not playing them in captain. These are flex plays. I believe that some of them are gonna be under 25% or right there kind of at that cusp. The first one is super cheap. It's Will Disley. We are dependent on him being there and healthy, right? So he was not practicing before missing last week. I think he might be back this week. If he's there, he's always a threat. And at 400, it opens up an awful lot of salary for you to be able to load up the rest of your lineup. And remember, every point matters in showdown. Two catches for like 13 yards when a player is $400 in your flex actually means a lot because it gives you access to all the guys that might have 25 or 30 point days and allows you to pay up for the superstars at captain, which is the optimal way to play the game. Another player that can do it in one catch, and he's really going to have to do it in one catch. He's not getting all that much service is Jalen Hyatt, one of the fastest players in the league. Uh, I believe that in preseason, he logged the time that was the fast or would have been the fastest time, you know, the little chip they have in the pads, the next gen stats would have been the fastest time on the field with a ball carrier, with a ball in his hand in 2022. Uh, so you know the kid can scoot. He's 2,000 in the flex. And uh, like I said, if he gets loose, we saw this where he caught a 59-yarder, 89 yards, $2,000. See the difference in price between him and somebody like Disley? Uh, this is a lot of points. This is this is a lot of points. For $2,000. One more that I think, two more that I think are really solid plays. The first one I like better than the second one. As I said before, Seattle struggles against slot receivers. Paris Campbell getting the most snaps in the slot so far for the New York Giants. Only 2,800, a nice release valve for salary for you. Uh, 8.4, 6.1 points the last couple of games. If he sneaks into the end zone, it's an absolute smash at 2,800. I do think that Wandale Robinson is a more talented player with the ball in his hands, but he's not really getting the snaps. Although when he's out there and running routes, he is getting targeted. 6.1 points for him. He's a little bit more expensive at 3,000. You're going to want to sprinkle one or both of these guys into lineups, especially if you're playing the mini max or you're playing uh, the big tournament like I like to play in your, your mass multi-entering with 150 lineups, you're going to want to have some allocation to them because both project to be less than like 25%. And we're going to talk about how I build lineups over at Fantasy Labs. If you want to get a discount of membership at Fantasy Labs, go to smizzle.tv slash labs with an uppercase L. Uh, case is important. I do not allow a kick or a defense at the captain spot. If you want to, go ahead. Play however you like. I'm just telling you how I play. I don't allow kick or a defense at captain, and I limit to one per lineup. Looking at the rules that I set for my showdown lineups, this is that rule where I pair at least 
uh, two players that are wide receiver, tight end, or kicker with the captain quarterback. So this is one I was talking to you about, the group I was saying uh, with Jones or with Gino at captain. Uh, I also make sure that I have at least one quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end from the opponent. So that's the bring back group. If I captain a wide receiver, their quarterback will be in the lineup. If I captain a tight end, their quarterback quarterback will be in the lineup and I limit to at most one defense or kicker from the same game period if you want to let two or three do it however you want I'm just telling you how I build my lineups and then what I feel is the most important rule I want to make sure that I have a position player running back or wide receiver where the projected ownership is less than 25 percent we're going to apply these settings we're going to generate these lineups and just realize that you do have to like run this a bunch of times and make sure you have the correlations and the combinations and the allocations that you want. You can already see that I'm getting way more Daniel Jones in captain than I'd want. And overall, probably going to be the same with Gino until I get in there and really get them down to the percentage that I want by maxing or minning uh, or flaming or snowflaking the players to make sure that I get the exact lineups that I want. It's not as simple as go there, click generate and just print money. So I wish you the best of luck this Monday night. Go check out the recap video over on the fantasy football channel. Channel. comes out tomorrow about let's say 11 a.m pacific time other than that great luck to you on monday night look out for another video right there he's a legend